Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is a very odd day. There is absolutely nothing to do out here today. Zero. Nothing. <laughs> the pots aren't due. Um, the, the mounts were done yesterday. The vanders were... I've got nothing to do out here. But um, I just wanted to look at a couple of blooms and um, you'll all be pleased to know I have a working pH meter. And you'll probably be even more pleased to know that I'm not filming it. <laughs> had enough of mucking about with that sort of thing. And quite honestly, I find it boring to watch. And if I do, I'm sure others do as well. We've had enough of all that. <laughs> right, um, things going on. The two big vanders are still doing really well. Um, I'm pleased with both of those plants this year. They have both bloomed twice. Um, Slight differences in coloration, and um, that big blue one up the back always aborts one, one bloom. Every single time. <laughs> I don't know why, it just does. It, uh, last time it was one near the base of the spike, this time it's the, um, it's the terminal bloom, didn't quite make it. But there's more than enough there, I don't mind an odd bud blasting, it's, uh, it's just the way of things I suppose. Um, both of those have bloomed twice this year, and They've both put on quite a lot of top growth, uh, growth. Um, good new leaves up the top, nice and clean, that's what I like. Vanders are like cattleyas in as much as their leaves have got to last a hell of a long time. So if they get bashed around or bug damage or slug damage or sunburn or anything like that, you've got to live with those leaves for a long time. And, um, you know, if you start hacking them off near the base, you get that bare stalk at the bottom which just doesn't look elegant quite honestly so um, I'm pleased with the top growth on all my vanders they've all done really well um, this big one here didn't actually bloom this year but that was a relatively young plant when I got it and it bloomed for the first time last year um, it's putting on good top growth so I would expect it to bloom next year the orange one's out of bloom now, um, but I mean that's bloomed three times this year and two of the bloomings were double spikes, so it's effectively had five spikes this year. You can't complain about that sort of thing. The two little seedlings up there, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing with the camera here, <laughs> bending over backwards. Um, I'm not sure I will keep those simply on the grounds that, you know, this little seedling here is probably three or four years off blooming. and. Um, this one here is probably two years off blooming. They're both growing okay, but they're a long way. And if they start getting as big as these, I'm gonna run out of places to put them. So I might actually pass those two on. Um, <clears throat> they have got names, both of them. Um, so they could be looked up to see what the blooms look like. Anybody want some Vanders? <laughs> um, over here, um, the... Um, Cinnamon Twinkle is, is opening up more spikes now. It's still got plenty to go. Um, this was the first spike to open, followed by this one, and it's moving around the plant. And it's got spikes that are still, you know, tiny little buds on them. So that's going to be in bloom a nice long time. Um, the repotted Deezers, um The last time I repotted Deezers, I had some tiny little seedling type plants given to me and when I repotted them they keeled over in days they just rotted off at the base they were not happy plants when they went in and they didn't last long however these look like they're going to make it I think if there was going to be a problem of any rot or anything setting in it would have happened by now um, so I think I've managed to successfully pot them these were the little um seedling growths basically that's a little community pot um, there's a couple of leaves don't look happy i think there's one plant in the middle that's probably not going to make it that um i'll keep my eye on obviously um the one thing that just shouldn't be allowed to happen if you've got collective deets deets touching each other or anything if you start seeing any rot or anything like that you need to get at it because it will spread um, they're very susceptible to that sort of thing you know, they, they're, they're a constantly wet plant, you know, and where you've got constant moisture, and certainly this time of year the old temperatures are down, rots can get, out, can get at things, you know, it's as simple as that. 
on that subject, where is it? Here. Um, I've got one Shari baby pushing a spike out, but I had two potfuls. And um, this one's, I didn't film it, but <clears throat> this one's just been chopped to pieces. Right in the centre of the plant was one of those bulbs turning that brownie colour and soggy. And uh, that's an instant job. <clears throat> so basically I, I, I split the plant, put it in some new media, cleaned it all up, and um, effectively it's starting again. But the, the, I know what the problem was, or I can guess what the problem was. Pot was far too big for it. And this goes back to a time when things needed repotting because the media was breaking down and I didn't have what I call cosy pots for the root ball, for the size of the plant. And obviously the bigger the pot and the poorer the root system, the longer your media is going to stay wet. And, you know, now I've got lower temperatures, I've really got to watch out for that sort of thing. <clears throat> Especially on the Oncidium types they seem to be the most prone to getting sort of bacterial infections and things like that. So you just got to be mindful as you're going around watering and things like that. Look at the colour of your pseudo bulbs, especially the older ones. And they've, if they start getting an orangey brown look, just pinch them gently. And if they at all, if they feel it in the slightest bit soggy, get them out <laughs> fast. It's a, it's a thing that will spread. And that bacterial type infection. Um, I've got three Latorias out at the moment. My Rhodostictum's out again. And quite honestly, that's, that's almost perfection as far as blooms are concerned. Colour, purest of whites. Nice purple tinge. Plant isn't growing fantastically, but, you know, it's bloomed on each new cane so far. So that'll do. <laughs> and the other one up the back here... This is um, Roy Tokunaga White Knight. Um, one spike's gone over, so these are the last remaining blooms that, that will last a bit longer, but not too much longer, because the blooms opened at a very similar time. That's got a lovely new growth pushing out of the base, so we've got a new cane to follow on. Plus, on this plant, there's two canes that are just maturing, that haven't bloomed yet. So, in theory, they will bloom, and then I've got at least one new growth coming on behind. Um, <clears throat> my nobly that's playing silly games at the moment <laughs> is in full bloom um, please don't ask why because I don't know it just is <laughs> I mean the nobly hybrids um, they've often got other things in them that are not nobly if you know what I mean there's other species and other species hybrids that get put in to get the colour range and everything like that because, I mean, the nobly species itself, there is only one, um, is, a, is a nice purple sort of bloom. Um, but obviously to introduce whites, yellows and the other colours that you can get, other things are added in. And I suspect on this one that there's just something in there that is a more prolific bloomer. You know, the nobly is a once-a-year type under normal circumstances. <laughs> and given how, much, how many of the nodes this one's used up, this is this year's cane here. That shouldn't bloom till the spring, and it's got buds the full length of it, right down to here. So that cane has got no spare nodes on it, so that will finish blooming, you know, during the winter. So come the spring, it won't. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, this is blooming on a this year cane as well and there's another this year cane pointing up the back there that I can see at least one bud on but only one and I'm hoping now that the cooler temperatures are going to stop any more buds forming it might make it worse who knows there's another cane down here with no buds on but this one's going to have a limited blooming in the spring now because it's decided to yeah. to do it now you know but I'll have the blooms while they're going they're lovely not fragrant, well there's a faint fragrance if you stick your nose right in there and get the pollen up your router, but uh, apart from that, no. <clears throat> um, my other Latoria has just opened. Now these are tiny little blooms. Um, that's not what I was expecting, I must admit. And quite honestly, the inside of the bloom is not that spectacular. Most of the colour is on the back of the plant, on the back of the blooms. Lovely spotting on the back. But the front is um, 
decidedly average, I'll call that. <laughs> and that's a cross between um, Polysema and Aberans. So uh, that's doing quite well. That um, yellow thing, I've forgotten the name of that. It's uh, somebody's name, Hamilton Ara or something like that. <laughs> um, the blooms are lasting well, but I do see some little turning on some of the uh, tips. So uh, probably another week or something like that, that will be gone. The um, only spike left on Harvey Annum is just finishing. Um, so I'm pushing on the new growths on this one to get this going. That's got a fine kiki on there with a good root system. I need to get that off. But I might actually just leave it there until the spring when at that point, if I pot it, it's got the longer days and the better weather to take off, if you see what I mean. Um, if I take it off now, it'll probably just go dormant and sit there and do nothing. <laughs> There's quite a lot of that going on in here at the moment, doing absolutely nothing. My spike on my um, Ranko stylus is uh, the buds are pushing on now. Starting to show the spotting. So it is going to be a spotty form, I would think, looking at the buds. But having never bloomed before, it's a wait and see. Um, up the back there is my reed stem epidendrum up against the glass and I was quite pleased because one of the canes looked like it was producing a spike. Well I'm even more pleased now because every single one of the new canes is producing a spike. That's going to be quite a show. Lovely deep orange with yellow centres. Um, but you can see the one on the left there is just starting to show some buds and the others are just pushing up now but all the new canes are going to bloom so I'm well pleased with that and then um, if it's in its ideal world and it's happy a lot of the radican style epidendrums do actually have a sequential effect to them they, they open their blooms as a sort of flush and then occasionally they can push on some new buds um, sort of and continue blooming for a while so it's another type of spike, you know, leave it on there until you're sure it's not going to bloom anymore. And I've even done that, I doubt if I can film it, it's through there. That's the one that was in flower when I got it. And I haven't cut it off, and do you know what, I think that's actually got some buds forming at the top. But we'll wait and see. That will have been quite a few months since it finished blooming, and if those buds do form, now that's quite impressive. Uh, what else have we got going on? I've got a um, Phalaenopsis type dendrobium that's pushing on some buds nicely. Well, there's two actually, but you can see the buds on that one. Not many, that's not a good spike. But then the, <laughs> the plant nearly didn't make it, so anything is better than nothing. Cattleya is still, still looking good. Fragrance on that is powerful. Um, certainly for the first week, um, there was hardly any sign of fragrance at all but as time has gone has gone on the fragrance has just got better and better um, so I am well pleased with that plant um, only one new growth since I got it but that's the result of that new growth so obviously the plants reasonably happy I don't think that cattleya is ever going to have more than a couple of blooms on a spike you sacrifice numbers of blooms for size with cattleyas. I mean, there's some of the giant ones, like six inches across. They'll very rarely have more than one bloom. But then when you get down to the ones that have the smaller blooms, you know, you can get a dozen. So, um, you know, you take your choice, really. You can either go for size and spectacle, and often quite short-lived, or you can go for the smaller, nu numerous blooms. Um, Bulbophyllum's still hanging in there. Um, looking back over the plant, this one bloomed, the, the escape E, this is decided to escape from the pot. So this one probably will, unless it's affected by the shorter days, you know, and there's just not enough light for it. So another new growth here, and the other new growth sticking up the back is the one that's actually blooming at the moment. So the bulb's on one side of the pot and the plume's on the other side. <laughs> Even the bloom's trying to escape. But... That's lasting well. I'm sure the last bloom I had didn't last as long, but I'm pleased with that. It's a nice, evenly balanced bloom. Quite nice. Oh, there's another one. Where is it? Ah, this thing down here. If I can get it out. Now, this is a, a, an only a, a possible name. 
um, Crassipes. Um, it was one of Archie's and he wasn't sure about the name. But that's a flower spike. And quite honestly, looking at the pictures, it's horrible. <laughs> but, you know, at least I've got one, you know. So we'll, we'll, we'll run with that. This is the one that was hanging out the pot that I bent back round and staked so that the roots can get into the media. So, uh, yeah, we have a flower spike on that one. That'll be a first. <laughs> it might be its last. Depends how pongy it is. Um, this one's been the subject of uh, quite a lot of... Not concern, but interest, shall we say. This is this, um, I've just watered this, it's dripping everywhere. This is this Bifrenaria Harrisonae. And quite honestly, the two latest growths, since I put them out in the media and started hydrating it, have plumped back up. Bonus. Obviously it's got a new growth pushing on as well. Now this is supposed to dry off in the winter and rest a bit, yeah? Well, it ain't going to get it. I'm not sacrificing the new growth. So uh, this year, it's not going to get treated properly. Uh, I'm just literally going to leave it in here um, and keep those roots hydrated. The bulbs are plumping back up nicely. They were getting quite desiccated. You can look back in the um, video where I actually stuck this in a pot and do a comparison, but they've plumped up nicely. So obviously it wasn't getting hydrated. Now it is. And I always go for plant first, bloom second. It's more important for me to look after that plant and, and allow it to grow and be strong and healthy because that's its most likely chance to bloom. If it needs a trigger to bloom it, okay, I might miss out for a year. <clears throat> but I'd rather have a big butch plant. It's coming off the mount. Um, come the longer days and the better weather, it'll come off that mount and be potted properly. Um, and then we'll go from there. But certainly with a bit more hydration around those roots, it's working. So it obviously likes a pot more than a mount. And sometimes you just have to try these things. You know, I've got lots of things that I thought, oh, that will do great on a mount. You know, and then a couple of them later, you sort of think, actually, that's not growing as well as it should. Perhaps it can go back in a pot. And then you get others that are in a pot that just never seem to grow that well. You try them on a mount and they take off like a rocket. It's just finding a comfort zone at individual plant level I think you just gotta sometimes it is trial and error um, my what do you call it up the back Victoria Reginae you look at that I don't know how close I can get in this light those are buds I'm now quite confident <laughs> quietly confident those are buds and not kikis it's just their position on the cane if they were lower down the cane I, I'd be 50-50 but the fact that they're right near the top of the cane, strange that if it is going to bud, it's doing it on a leaved cane, because under normal circumstances, these bloom on the old um, leafless canes. That's where they normally bloom from. And quite honestly, it means you can see the blooms so much better. You know, if I'm going to get blooms in amongst the leaves, um, it'll distract from them a little bit. <coughs> Next to it, if you look at that cane there, Right at the top are some swellings. Now that was a kiki that I bought from Burnham's. That's um, Della... Oh God, I've forgotten. Della something. <laughs> Got food on the brain at the moment. Della Tescans or something like that. <sighs> I think the roots have actually grabbed hold of the thing. Delicatum. I'll get there in a minute. It's a Kingianum type that has white blooms and is probably one of the, the most fragrant blooms you can get for the time of year. Um, you know, late winter, early spring blooming. It was in bloom when I got it. Single cane. It's grown a lovely big fat new cane this year. Only the one, but then that's, you know, it's a large one. Um, but they can bloom from the older canes and that looks like it might be going to do it. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, that will be a surprise if it does that, I must admit. It's not, it's not a large plant yet, but as I said, it was a single cane kiki in bloom when I got it. So uh, it was obviously a, a mature plant that was split up. Um, 
Kiki's taken off probably and the plant split into, split into small bits. I know what Burnham's do. They have, they grow things up to specimen size and they can put them in their orchid paradise for display purposes. But there comes a time where they've got to be repotted. And at that time, it's a nursery. You know, its objective is to open its doors. People come in and part with their money. Otherwise, it goes out of business. So there comes a time with their specimen plants where they actually have to be repotted. They've just outgrown their container. And they'll take that opportunity to split one up now and again. And then you get a nice selection of plants, albeit either divisions or kikis, that they wouldn't normally sell. There's a lot of their specimen plants that they don't sell. They're for display purposes. Some of those plants, you know, go back to Sarah's sort of mother and father when they were younger. You know, that nursery and the family business has been around a long time. So some of those specimen plants have been around a long time and occasionally they split one up. Um, I've managed to get hold of some of those divisions. <laughs> It's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> anyway, that's about all that's going on out here at the moment. Um, I don't think there's anything else. No. Nope. That nobly seems to have finished doing its autumn now, which is good. I'm fed up with picking up the leaves. So I think any leaves that are going to go, one left, no, he's still hanging on, um, are going to have gone now. So what's left is this year's canes. They've all finished growing. So I can get that into my version of its winter rest, which is not bone dry for any length of time. I don't do that. Um, and that has bloomed spectacularly for as many years as I've had it. And it doesn't get a proper rest. The nobly hybrids I don't think need to be forced into that rest to any great extent. Obviously, if you live in a much warmer climate, you may have a problem with these because the drop in temperature is quite important, as is the increase in light. Now, in their natural environment, the nobly species itself would have quite a dry, cool winter, but it would get bright light as well. Now, there's some of that in the hybrids. And I think personally with the hybrids, the bright light and the cooler temperatures are more important than trying to dry it off and ending up shriveling all your canes. You know, try and keep your canes plump. You know, that's, uh, that's the life of the plant, effectively. And after it's finished blooming, that's the support for the new growths in the spring. Yeah? Along with some new roots, hopefully. So that's what I do with them anyway. And they've always bloomed successfully even at the wrong time of year. <laughs> Dopey thing. What else was I going to show? There's something niggling me in the back of my mind. Oh yeah, I've got a failing Tolumnia that's decided... Oh, here he is. Let me get him down. This is a badly desiccated plant. Um, it is pushing out a little new growth, very weak. But it's got virtually no roots. This was one of the ones that went down badly. And it pushed up a flower spike which promptly aborted. Well, you can see there's another good reason for not cutting your spikes off. Now, I shouldn't really let that bloom, but it's got two buds. That's not going to drain that plant any more than it already is. The plant still might not make it. It's, out of the Tolumnias that are recovering, this one is just not doing very well. I've got one other as well that just will not put out new roots. But... Although it is just starting a new growth, it pushed up two new leaves out of the centre of the existing fan. And those aren't quite as desiccated. Okay, a few more leaves, not quite as badly desiccated, equals more photosynthesis, which puts a little bit back into the plant, which might trigger some roots. But so far I see no new roots on that one. But it's never bloomed for me. Um, Jarek flyer, red butterfly, it looks like quite an attractive bloom. Um, if it does bloom they'll probably be smaller than normal, if they make it. But we shall see. Um, as I said, that's one of the ones that, as a plant, is, is poor. Um, oh, I mean, some of the others are, you know, they've recovered very well, because they were all in a reasonably bad state 
you know, back in the year, I videoed them. I mean, that's that's a recovered plant. That's now pushing out new fans all over the place and new roots all out in the moss, up the back of the bark, yeah, coming out the bottom of the moss. That's a recovered plant. That should now push on those new growths and bloom. It's just plenty big enough plant to bloom. They don't need to be giant plants to bloom. So that one's recovered okay. Difficult to say why some do and some don't. This one looks like it's not going to make it. It's badly desiccated and it has been like that for a very long time now. It just won't hydrate and it's got no roots. Well, it's not out yet. It's not under the hedge because it doesn't seem to be getting any worse. But that needs a new growth and some roots or it's just not going to make it. Badly desiccated, that one. Can't hydrate it that you know, that much without roots, unfortunately. Most of the others are coming on okay. That one's pushing out nicely. It's got lovely strong new growths on it. That's a miniature one, but it's growing well now. Got some nice good roots. So some of them are recovering quite nicely now. They've got the new growths, but there's just those two. That one and that one just won't push on. But give them time, perhaps. We'll wait and see. I as a... Yeah, you can chuck a load of comments in. What do you think? <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I'm fed up with the sight of this thing, and it's a very large mount. Um, and a lot of the plant is destined to be cut off at some point. Now, it is pushing out new growth. So I've got a nice strong new growth coming out of then. This is, this is three plants. This one's not going to make it. That one's definitely dying. Um, and it only had a couple of bulbs. I'm not fussed about that part. This part here, um, it's pushed out a new growth there with a reasonable leaf on. Uh, sorry, the, the one I've got in my hand is part of a different plant. It also pushed out this growth with a leaf. A little bit of discoloration on it, but at least it pushed a new growth out. Now it's pushing this new growth out and it has got roots. So that part of the plant is not too bad. Not too bad at all. This part of the plant is a big part. And it is growing new growths here, underneath. There's one here. It's even got a sheath on it, that one. And then there's another big, uh, there's another big one here. That's also got a sheath on it. So it's pushed out in that direction and that direction. And up here is the old part of the plant that is destined to be cut off. Now I'm wondering whether I should just take the bull by the horns and take that off its mount, cut off the older part, parts that are destined to come off at some point anyway, and get that in a holy clay pot. What do you think? I've only got small holy clay pots at the moment, the large ones are all, all used up. Um, nonetheless, by the time I've cut the older parts of that plant off, I will have two pieces, both with new growths, both pushing out new roots. And although doing it this time of year is not ideal, it's got new, that both pieces have got new roots, you know. So um, I will lose some good roots. You know, roots like this are highly unlikely to come off. They're, they're really grabbed on. But nonetheless, if it's pushing new ones out, plus it's got quite a few aerial ones that can go in the, the large bark, so they've still got plenty of air around them, I think it will take off. Because um, this is never going to look any good as it is. It's as simple as that, you know. I mean, these old tatty leaves are going to yellow and fall off eventually. And then I've got stumpy little bare bits right on the top of the plant, the bit that you look at, you know. Because all the new growth's heading downwards at the moment, literally. This one's, you know, on the lower part of the plant. So's this one. And so's that one round there. Everything's going down here. And it could do with coming back up into the light. So I think I might um, give that one a hack. That was virtually a lost plant. That was an infected plant, basically. So it was virtually lost, and I gave it a go. You know, I treated it, repeat treatments, and um, the new growths are coming out quite nicely now with new roots. So I think it's sort of recovered, but I think I ought to rejuvenate it now because... I'm still worried that that dreaded F stuff 
is in there in a dormant state rather than a dead state <laughs> and it could fire up again and get into those new growths. So I think it might be prudent to actually get that off the mount, get the older part of the plant off completely. That will also give me a chance to recheck the rhizomes while I'm at it and see if the treatment's done its job properly and the newer parts are, are okay and just get it get the smaller pieces going in a holy clay pot um, yeah I think I might actually do that uh, if I do it I'll film it obviously because that'll be quite an unusual thing to do tearing a plant off a mount spoiling its nice root system anyway that'll do for today I'm now going to go out and try and start my flipping car because it's uh, the man still hasn't been over he was supposed to come last night and didn't so I'll have to go and knock on his door again and um, yeah, I've got shopping to do today, so if the car won't start, because it's intermittent, some days I go out there and it starts fine, and other days not a light. Um, if it starts, then obviously I'll get as much done today as I possibly can, and hopefully the man will be over this evening. Starting to get a bit worrying, because although most of the time I don't need that car, but coming up to this weekend I do. My daughter's supposed to be coming down, and it's an Orchid Society meeting, uh, and both of those are probably not going to happen if the car's not right. So it's becoming a, a worry. Life's a worry, <laughs> and then you die. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll leave it at that. There's a few things going on. That's, that's all this one was. And, um, you know, it's going to be that time of year, I'm afraid, you know, where there just isn't much going on. So probably fine that videos are going to get a bit thin. Seriously, you know, just literally, I'm not going to film for the sake of it. You know, so, uh, you know, they may get a bit thinner on the ground, give me a bit of a rest. So, uh, right, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.